Hello, Irish fans, and welcome to another edition of Dome and Domer. My name is Mike Brammer. Joining me tonight, Ed Jordanik, also joining us from ndnation.com, Mike Coffey. Ed, we're venturing into the world of virtual, so uh, good and bad with that. A lot of times you see stuff you should <laughs> you see. You think? <laughs> and then you see stuff. At least my giant work. head isn't going to be in this entire thing. God, I hope. Hey, the, back, the background could have been a lot of other things, but luckily it was something not too bad. All right, Thank Ed, God. I'm going to start yeah. with you. Uh, Coffee and I kind of whiffed last week. We thought we were looking at a tight game. I think a lot of people did. A couple of our listeners posted it online saying, hey, I whiffed on that one. I also was thinking tight. Were you, would you have said a tight game as well? And are you surprised at all with what we got? Uh I guess I was a little bit uh, I was a little bit surprised. Although I have to say that you know going in, uh, it 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 really didn't look like a very good pit offense on paper, um, and um, so I thought that. I mean, I don't think I would have said you know forty five to ten or forty five to three or you know forty to nothing or anything like that. Um, but I really didn't think that you know, there was a big cause for alarm after Louisville. It was just one of those strange games where, you know, it was 12 to seven. Um, it easily could have been 28 to seven, or it could have been 31 to seven. And then I think people would have, you know, had predictions or you guys would have had a prediction that would have been not quite as tight against Pitt. But I think a lot of that is hangover from the way that Notre Dame has played Pitt in the past and the way that Pitt has played Notre Dame in the past, um, which has been tight, which has been tough. But, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, and, and Pitt did not have an off week. Pitt looked tired. Um, Pitt has a lousy head football coach when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to a, comes to a lot of things. So um, true. And uh, you know, so so whatever. I mean, you know, it, it's yeah. again, it's easy to look back and say this, this, and that. Yeah. But I think that you know, I I, I don't think that like I, I did not think that Notre Dame would have an ineffective passing game all year. You know, I thought that there, there's, you know, there's, there had to be a breakthrough somewhere, and you know, luckily it came in the form of of Skronik making a couple big plays, and that seemed to kind of get things, um, you know, moving. Um, it's still a, it's still an area of uh, concern going forward, but they just needed to get off the Schneid with the passing game and make something happen, and I think you know, mission accomplished. So yeah, I would agree with you. You know, it's interesting you bring it because you're segueing right into where I was hoping this show would go. Not, not that I'm going to pick on book here, but th there are some interesting right. things to take into context with the way the game unfolded. Yeah, we got the numbers that we were hoping for. He had over 300 yards. However, if you look at the film, you're going to see some things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and I just, I'm kind of curious, Coffee, because I know that, you know, uh, you see this stuff. Uh, let's just dig into the first one right I tend here. To be a little critical, yeah, I kind of do. But here, here's the first. And by the way, for, for all of you who are watching right now, who say, "Yeah, Mike and Mike have a face made for radio. Ed has a face made for Telegraph," which is why he's all dimmed out. But well, I'm masquerading as a White Sox fan after hiring Tony Larusa. So don't get me started. Don't <laughs> get me started. So anyway, let's watch so, the play, shall we? Yeah. So here's the point. Um, Coffee, you know, the, the thing I want you to look at here is look at Ian Book's feet. Look at how he releases the ball. Look at the positioning of his feet when he releases the ball. And look at the trajectory of the ball and where it goes. And I think you're going to see what the concern is, right? He steps up. But look how he turns sideways and throws it. It's kind of towards yeah, the guy's he's, back, right? He's he's not stepping into the throws. Not it was a freaking pass. touchdown pass. It, it is. A, that, okay, Ed, it's a touchdown pass because the guy who caught it didn't have anyone within 10 yards of him, which is great. You could also say but, it's because the, the quarterback put the ball where no one else could catch it besides the receiver. Yeah, but even the yeah, but he he could have put it where even the receiver couldn't and nobody would have catch it. So if he had thrown it right there, it would have been fine. But he's throwing the ball with his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, his feet practically right next to each other. And, you know, yes, it was a touchdown. And it, it's hard I, I think the, to yeah, – Yeah. Here's of a game that ends 45-3. to three, But the only person who could – the only person who could have prevented a Ben Skronik's touchdown was Ben Skronik because there was nobody anywhere close to him. 
Well, you got the Ian right. Book has plenty of issues, but you know, do you want do you want Joe Montana or Jeff George? <laughs> I mean, Jeff George looked beautiful every I, time I he dropped back and threw the ball, and Joe Montana threw touchdown passes for Notre Dame. Oh. I mean, I love Ian Book as a person, but he has not advanced mechanically over the last three years, which which disturbs me because in two weeks we have the number one ranked team coming to South Bend, and those kind of passes are not going to be that wide open against them. Yeah. Well, I, I do think this, and, um, you know, we're kind of picking on him a little bit. Look, Ian Book has been a, a big time player. You know, in this one, he does step into it. Now, Skronik makes a great adjustment. And, I, I, but, but he does step into this throw and he gets the full dip of it, right? Um, but in terms of the, the concern with him is, okay, you know, is, Book's going to have to be perfect against Clemson, right? We're, we're going to no, need not. to be well, not necessarily perfect, but these are the kinds of things that are going to separate you from that. And I, it's not just one, Ed. I got like four plays I'm about to show you where his feet aren't set. Yeah, and, no, I'm, I'm well aware of his limitations. I mean, his he still has issues with short throws. He has issues with this or that. But, you know, to me, the only time I get freaked out about Ian Book is when he throws the ball to the other team. And that's yeah, and he's happened, not doing you know, yeah, I agree. And, that, and you know, so I don't really care about his, you know, yeah, you have to have good fundamentals, blah, blah, blah. We can I don't know enough about the position to sort of grade those. What I what I was worried about in the first several games is there were too many throws that he seemed a half second or a half beat slow. And that resulted in defenders getting a jump on the ball and getting really close to to picking it off. And you're absolutely right, Mike, against Clemson, he does not have that extra half second where a mistake can be covered up because, you know, the other guy's not going to quite get there. You know, in other words, against yeah. Clemson, the ball that gets tipped away is a ball that's going to get intercepted. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, again, I, I don't want to pick on him because here it is, another touchdown. But watch his feet on this one. He kind of fades back and, and he's throwing off his back foot. Um, you know, in terms of mayor, I mean, look, let's just be honest. This kid is ridiculous. I love him. And I as think a freshman, he, that's the best he, part of it. He is going to be something special. I think baby Gronk is a perfect nickname for this kid because he's the real Great. deal. But if, if, if and you, Brammer, uh, a lot of credit for you for making Pitt's uniforms look even semi-normal. Because when I was watching <laughs> the game in real time, I was like, "What the is? Is this a prison group that they brought out here?" I didn't understand what they were doing. But even the, I, even the TV announcers made made a comment about absolutely. it. Absolutely. But, but and then the thing is, the the thing about Ian Book is, even with the mechanical issues that we're bringing forward, this kid has the mentality of a winner which is no, great is. Yeah. to see. This kid will make plays when plays need to be made. What bothers me is, is, are his mechanics going to put us in a position where more plays need to be made than otherwise? I mean, yeah. you can't doubt Ian Book's heart. You can't doubt Ian Book's desire for Notre Dame to win, which is yeah, fantastic. Right. But it, it, yeah, I, you know, even with those things, I watch these plays and I kind of go, because... Yeah, there's, against there's, a team like Clemson, it's going to matter. Yep, and it, it's it's going to be a bit of an issue. Um, and I just think that, uh, well, look, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, he does win and he does it. And, it. and I think part of what he's doing in terms of his adjustments with his feet is literally because of his size, he's finding that yeah, visual that right, allow, it allows him yeah. to see better. He's got to move out of the pocket in certain small little steps to be able to vi to see, because he's not Trevor Lawrence. He's not six five looking over. No, uh, I, I, I think it would be better if they rolled him out on more passing plays because if he's standing there behind offensive linemen who are six two, six three, and he's trying to see downfield over them, that's it's just physical limitations. It's tough for him. I think to help him succeed. They need to roll him out more so he can see a little bit more of the field, watch the plays develop, and see people who have come open rather than people who are open rather obviously. Yeah. Did now, they do some of that like in the first quarter? Wasn't that sort of the the game I plan they, in the uh, Cotton Bowl, you know, um, against Clemson? It seemed to me I recall that that was sort of the 
the play calling that they had with him. They had some rollouts. They had they, him they, out of the pocket yeah, a little bit. Did that sound pocket, right? right? Yeah. No, yeah, I, yeah, I, think, I think you're I, right. Ed, I that. think you're right. But, you know, here's here's a, another example, Ed, of what you were referencing earlier. The, the shorter underthrow plays. The guy's yep. right there and he's zipping it. Yep. The, the touch has been a little – even the um, Todd McShay made a comment about it. Yeah, he did, yeah. His, his touch has really not been there in terms of these type of throws. Now, he did make some good throws. One of them I don't have to play for us, but there was a crossing route from Mayer where it was absolutely perfect. I mean, he just – and what I kind of noticed, though, is that his feet were better set. This one, it's not so bad. I don't think he's got an issue here. He's stepping into it, but he's his touch is off. He's, he's just zipping way too much. It's still Wait. a little off the back of the foot. Though. Yeah, exactly. He kind of slings from his back he, foot a he fair does amount. Sling. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. He, he's definitely slinging. And, uh, you know, that's an issue. But, look, I, I don't want to nitpick on the guy. Um, obviously, there's some other great, you know, coffee. We didn't talk much about the defense last time. But, boy, I'll Not tell you to what. Talk about if, in this game. Holy cow. If they I were, were Kyle fabulous. Hamilton, my pro debut, uh, and, and this is just – some speed from the defense. And I think this is something that really shows it. If, if you want to know why, how do we, how do we limit pit to three points? Check out the speed and reaction of the entire defense here. Um, this is the kind of stuff that, I mean, they've been doing it all season. This isn't just an anomaly that we saw. And, and uh, you know, kudos to the, to the coaching staff and, you know, Carkley again. Yeah. But there, well, the, there are the, the bunch of defensive they're, they're, plays. They're just there. You you yeah. watch the you watch the videos of these plays, and they're just there and making plays. And you you can't look at oh this guy's playing great. These guys like they're playing great as a group. And yeah. the the Did defense. Yeah. It seems like everybody. It, it seems like they almost instinctually know where the ball's going to be, and they're just there to make the play. Do you guys know where I meant to follow up on this? Do you guys know where was did Kaiser play on Saturday? I don't see him out there at all. I don't. No, I don't think he did. His number that much, but no, I mean, no, it, no. I, I mean, when 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 you're missing a week for stuff, right. you, I mean, but I thought the I, idea I was to get him and Foskey much after, more involved, yeah. and Foskey Foskey was out there, Foskey Foskey whatever. But I, you know, obviously you had the block punt, and he was there in a lot of passing downs, et cetera. But I don't think I saw Kaiser out there. And I thought part of the game plan was to get him more get him in. No, on the field right. a little bit more. I, I didn't I, see him. I, you know, I, I love watching Foskey play. He's just so he – he's, 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 he's an athlete. He really is. Um, I think this is the uh, – well, this is back to the speed. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're in our uh, alpha or beta mode where I've got a couple of these videos that I wanted to show on. I didn't have these lined up correctly. But Grammar's uh, got a new toy. It's Grammar's a new toy. A new and toy. We'll eventually get this figured out. Oh, well, as, usual, Kaiser, other... as usual with Notre Dame, uh, imagine uh, next year how we're going to be yeah. at this time. And... So, you know, this is – and again, I, I don't want to pick on him, but here's a perfect example of book um, – Watch his feet when he when he's rolling right. There is nobody there defensively, and what he needs to do is lean forward to step and throw forward. But look what he ends up doing. He kind of, look at his angle coming back away from the play instead of moving forward to step and throw. He's he's there, he's there, and he's open, but he underthrows it, and and that. You know that 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 allows the cornerback to come off and come back into the play. When and, Montana made throws like that, we used to think it was a slice of heaven. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm just he had that same he had that same kind of style. Remember when he would he, he would kind of make those it. jump throws and his yeah his he legs did would He's right. That was the kind of throw he made at the Dwight Clark. It was the same kind of you Notre Dame fans. We'd seen him make that play so many times. Um, yeah. But um, but you're right. I mean, there's there's still you know that I don't know what was the matter with that particular play. Um, I don't know if he if if book just kind of picked you know he just kind of waited too long or whatever. But um, you know this uh, I, I I was only showing this one just to show some of the defensive pressure that we did. Have. And I you know the these guys a lot of times don't get a lot of this. But I mean I there has been some push up front. Um, these guys are you know making an effort and. Jalen Hay Dalen Hayes has had some nice spin moves. I don't know if you guys saw that in some of the replays. 
there was one particular sack he had where it was just an awesome move, a, a spin, like kind of an underspin. I don't even know how to explain it, but just a spin that I hadn't seen. And um, in any event, you know, the defense in, in plays like this is coming up big. You know, one thing I did want to point out, and I, I, don't, I hope I got this, but um, let me see if it's any event, what I what I did is I I um I found a couple clips of some blocking, and this is it right here. I want you to look at so book ends up getting the first play. It's third and six. He gets the first down on this play. I want you to look at Williams. Look at his blocking on this particular play. He singles out the guy that he's got. He stays with it keeps him and that guy doesn't have a chance to, to make the tackle prior to the first down. I found like three different plays where Williams sought out his blocker and I mean was aggressive like you couldn't believe. And well, that's one I, of the reasons he's starting. I mean yeah, exactly. Tyree's got well, a lot of speed and that's the and reason. some good instincts, but yep. does he have the ability to make the play that Williams just made on the play that you're showing? That when it's not his play, he has the instincts to find the guy who needs to be pushed out of the play for it to for it to succeed. That's right. that's the key. That's I think what as fast and good as Chris Tyree is, that's what he's going to learn as he progresses through the program is how to make blocks like Williams just made. Exactly. Well, was this even a was this even a designed run or was it just Williams sort of you know being a good football player and getting in the way of somebody so that his quarterback had a better chance of getting a first down i don't remember was it i don't think it was a design run was it no i don't think it was a design run at all i think it's definitely a, a pass play so but it's just a he, it's just a heads up play i mean it's, it's a heads just a, up play his yeah. responsibility oh, yeah, is that guy right there i mean you can tell that he's singling him out right from the snap of the ball right and he he knows that that's his responsibility and look at him chase him but he stays with it look at him stay with it and I mean, that's the kind of stuff that that extra yard or two is the difference between us beating Clemson and not beating Clemson. Yeah, and we shouldn't pass on the opportunity also to talk about, you know, one of the things that Notre Dame did again against Pittsburgh. It'll be interesting to see if they can do it against, you know, um, Clemson is and and this was really, I think, probably one of the more frustrating things that the three of us have talked about over the last several years. But to see this football team, you know, get third and two, third and three, third and one consistently, you know, on the ground running it. And, you know, and part of that is Williams. Part of that is the veteran offensive line. I mean, obviously it's a team thing, but it's just so refreshing to not have that angst on third and short like we've had for several years now, it seems. Um, I, I mean, yep, it true. feels, you know, and, and that's such a big, you know, it's such a, it's such a important thing in college football to move the chains especially in a game like we'll have against Clemson where maintaining possession, shortening the field, hanging on to the ball, keeping the defense off the field, all those kind of things. It, it's a uh, little things. Yeah. Those things, yeah, that'll, those things will be so important to stay in the game into the second half, into the fourth quarter. Um, I'm assuming we're going to get to Trevor Lawrence and all that, but I mean, it's, it's just, it's just great to think that, to feel like we have the ability um, whether it's a you know whether it's a quarterback sneak where where book gets the kind of push up front where he can get that half yard or whether it's Kyron Williams who twists his body and makes it really hard for a defender to keep him to stand him straight up and to keep him from getting that extra half yard or yard yeah. that's been fun to watch which, so which let me ask definitely let, been doing. let me ask you guys a question we are five games into the Tommy Reese offense what do you guys notice that's different what do you like what do you not like uh, I will. I will say that I have been pleasantly surprised. I I thought he was a little too young to be getting this position. I was kind of a little raised eyebrow. I, but you know we're not there. So you know Brian Kelly owns this one, and I think we talked about that in the last season. Um, but you know what? I'll, I'll give him credit because they have delivered. I mean, it's not like Notre Dame's not a very good offensive team. They definitely are. There, there was one play, you know, it's interesting you brought this up. We had friends that have come over. There's a 1995 grad from Notre Dame who lives down by us, and their their family comes over to watch the games with us. And she asked me, she's like, why do they run this little pitch play where, you know, Book gets the shotgun and then shovels pitches it, to the, it, shovels yeah. it to the running back who runs wide left? 
why are they doing that? And I'm like, well, they do that because they're setting up for a fake to that. And sure enough, they end up running up. Now, Book ended up missing the throw on that, but he was wide open. I mean, there was nobody there. Um, but in any event, I have seen stuff where Tommy is setting things up. Yep. And uh, and I, I think that's the mark of a good offensive coordinator is you, you look to, to do things like that, to put the defense in a position to then set them up. So I, I'm I'm happy with them. I got to be honest with you. I'm pleasantly surprised at this point. I would say my coffee. The thing that I, you know, I mean, obviously it's always always a work in progress. But I like the fact that he's obviously a, a coordinator who focuses on the playmakers more than the play calling. Um, so you know, it's it's kind of figuring out his personnel, who can do what, and 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 figuring out ways to put them in positions to to do what they do. Um, I've always been more of an execution person than play calling. I think it's so it's kind of lazy and easy to criticize play calling. A lot of times, you call the right play, and a, your guy, your, an offensive guard, gets beat by a defensive tackle, and the play doesn't work. Um, or you know, you've got a good play call, and before the quarterback can can get rid of the ball, he gets creamed. So um, that's execution. That's not play calling. Um, but I think Tommy's had a good good mix of stuff. Um, I think he and Book are still sort of figuring out what they've got in terms of the wide receiver position. It's been sort of all over the board. They haven't been able to get into a groove with anybody. Now Austin and Lindsay are out. So, you know, if this connection with Skronik can continue, if he can get Wilkins and Keys involved, if he could, you know, I mean, I th they were talking this past week about how Tremble is, is a little bit hurt or a little bit uh, banged up. Um, you know, he Although was blocking has been doing. I'm not surprised. Exactly. But exactly. But they need him to sort of be that sort of, you know, alternate kind of uh, sort of seam guy kind of down the field guy. Possibly. Yeah, I, I think um, mayor is going to need to have six to eight catches against Clemson. Otherwise, I don't I don't see us, you know, having the kind of success we're going to need to have. But, yeah, you're right. But the, there's some, uh, you know, we're going to have to make up for where def we're deficient. But I, I do think that back to Clemson, it, it's going to be the little things. If we can somehow put together the perfect offensive game, I do think the defense is going to surprise some people. I, I you know, there, there's some talent there and there's some guys that, that really play straight up and play nose to nose football. So I, I think we might surprise people defensively against Clemson, but offensively, we're going to need to be there. You know, before we close out, I mean, obviously, you know what's going to happen? They're going to have to play a walk-on quarterback against BC, and Phil Jerkovic is going to steal our thunder and beat <laughs> Clemson, and yeah. and then we're going to and then we're going to you know it, we're going to be playing the number six team in the country a week from Saturday. And and even <laughs> even more interesting than that, what happens if BC upsets Clemson, and then we beat Clemson without Lawrence? Clemson all of a sudden has two losses, can't get into the ACC championship game with two losses. It's going to end up being ND in Miami going into the playoffs. And, well, yeah, that's it is what it is. Yeah, well, I'd, I wouldn't it. mind getting to have another, I wouldn't mind getting another shot at sort of jerking that chain or whatever. They're, they're... Uh, maybe, I but <laughs> I, I, I would rather Notre Dame play Clemson at full strength because if they don't, this is going to be a whole bunch of people saying, well, 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 well. Oh, well, sure, but you can't control you know, that, you know. You, you, I mean, if they lose to Boston College, that's nothing play, we, there's but... nothing we can do about that. No. You, you got to play the games you're going to play, but. My preference would be a full-strength Clemson team so we know where we're at. All right. Uh, quickly, Coffee, what's your prediction Saturday? Well, Who do they play Saturday? <laughs> well, my, is there a game Saturday? My <laughs> predict, well, I have two predictions. My prediction for the game on Saturday is Notre Dame is going to beat uh, Georgia Tech 49-14, uh, to 14, and next week we're going to have the correct date under the game from last week because you missed it by a year. So. Uh oh 2021. Yeah, you're right. Good call. <laughs> nice catch. Way to point for that all, out. For all <laughs> people like me who have OCD, I've been looking at that <laughs> the entire podcast going. All right, let's, we gotta, hey, let's start all over. We got to re redo this podcast. Well, the the um, entire thing. Can, can we get a light on Ed's face this time? Or no. I'm gonna I'm gonna go no. with 3117. I I think we're gonna have a little bit of effect of looking ahead, but um, not not terribly bad. But I, I think it will be 3117. Ed, what do you think? I think Eddie Lee Ivory is going to rush for 147 yards and Pepper <laughs> Rogers is going to go for it every fourth down, but Notre Dame is still going to win uh, 41 to 41 to 11. 
And no go. one on this podcast other than us is old enough to know what that means. So. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, there you go. When old people get into modern technology, but you know it is what it is. All right, good deal. We'll leave it. That's there. what you should. That's what you should do every week, Mike. Is you should have some uh, Bram. You should have some. Um, you should have some clips from you know, like old games old from the seventies. Yeah, thought about when, the, the intro stuff. We got to have the intro stuff. Oh well, we played Clemson in seventy seven, didn't we? Seventy seven. That's right. Yeah, that's we right. Did. Yeah. That yeah, was we played Clemson in seventy seven and uh, the orange uniforms with yeah. You could just have a, a bunch of uh, you could just have a bunch of clips of Woody Hayes slugging Charlie Bauman on the sidelines from Clemson, <laughs> or you could uh, or you could show you could show like you know C.J. Spiller running wild against uh, who knows who something I don't know just bring bring out bring out some good old stuff. Steve Fuller didn't Steve Fuller wasn't he a quarterback for Clemson? He, he was, was yeah, yeah I think he was, he yeah. was pretty Again, decent. Young people on their iPhones have nice. no idea what we're talking about. But Google it. Google I like it. that. Uh, Get on the Google. Figure it out. <laughs> All right. We'll leave it there. You've been listening to Dome and Domer, an online conversation about Notre Dame sports. Not just listening, man. You've been watching. You've been watching. <laughs> For more than a half a hour. Hopefully from a fan's perspective. Do you not have a life? <laughs> Red Jordanek and Mike Coffey. I'm Mike Brammer. Thanks for watching. See ya.